On August 13, 1960, in a little log cabin in Drake County, Ohio, was born Phoebe Ann Mosey. You might know her better as Annie Oakley. She was not born into fame, and as a matter of fact, her family was quite poor. Annie herself was the one who had to pull her family out of poverty. It's a long and fascinating journey, and I hope you join me as we explore the amazing life of Annie Oakley on Now You Know More. Annie was born to Susan and Jacob Mosey. Jacob served as a soldier in the War of 1812 and was 61 years old at the time that Annie was born. Susan and Jacob had a total of seven children together, which was quite normal back then. In late 1865, Jacob was caught in a blizzard and he nearly froze to death. He was then considered a cripple from the effects of that event, and in 1866 he caught pneumonia and passed away when Annie was only six years old. That left Susan to raise the children on her own, and at the time she was working as a nurse and making $1.25 per week, which was not enough to support the family. Susan made the decision to send Annie and her little sister Sarah to the Drake County Infirmary. It wasn't long before Annie was then bound out to a local family. To be bound out meant that poor children would be able to live as servants with more wealthy families. By doing this, they would be able to attend school and earn a little money by helping with chores. She was to stay with the Booze family, where she was to tend to an infant and help out with cooking and cleaning. But this turned out to be a very dark time for Annie. She was not a servant, but a slave. Her masters were so horrible that Annie would never mention their names. She only referred to them as the wolves. Annie had to start work on the farm at 4 a.m., caring for livestock, working in the garden, hunting for goods, along with the rest of the cooking, sewing, and child care. When the wolves were not happy with how Annie performed, they would often beat and starve her. Keep in mind, Annie was only around nine years old at this time. One evening, Annie was working on the mending, and she dozed off from exhaustion. The mistress of the house was so upset with her that she boxed Annie's ears in before throwing her out into the snow with no coat or shoes on. Annie was fearful that she would freeze to death. She knelt down into the snow, and she tried to pray, but her lips had become frozen, and she was not even able to make a sound. Eventually, Annie was able to run away. That is when a kind stranger took her in, gave her food, and just enough money to purchase a train ticket home. Things were not much better when she arrived there, as her mother had remarried, and she had given birth to yet another child, and then her husband passed away. By the time Susan remarried for the third time, the debt was so bad that she was in danger of losing the farm. Her new husband was not able to help with much of anything, due to the fact that he was blind. This is when Annie decided to take matters into her own hands. She used her father's hunting rifle to search for food, to keep the family going. But she didn't stop there. She started hunting to sell her game to local hotels and restaurants. She became so good at it that she was able to earn enough money to pay off her mother's mortgage at just 15 years old. Annie set herself on a strict schedule where she would make sure that she had time to educate herself with reading, writing, and sewing. Annie practiced her shooting skills so often that eventually she was able to shoot with both hands, and then she started doing trick shots. Annie had made quite a name for herself around town, and eventually she was invited to compete in a shooting contest with a man by the name of Frank E. Butler. Now, Frank was a professional trick shooter, and he felt no one would ever be able to best him. Before Frank knew who his opponent was, he had taken bets of $100 that he'd be able to beat anybody, and that is when 15-year-old Annie stepped up. Annie was able to hit 25 clay pigeons in the contest, and Frank was only able to hit 24. But Annie did not only win the contest, she also won the heart of Frank, as he fell deeply in love with her that day, and he vowed, right then and there, I decided, if I could get that girl, I would do it. Frank started writing Annie letters, but he didn't just write them as himself. He would write them as if he was his dog, George. George was a little French poodle that Annie absolutely adored. He would confess his love to her over and over again, 
and then he would sign the letters, Love, George. Annie finally gave in to his advances, and they were married August 23, 1876. Annie then traveled with Frank to different shows all around the West, but not as a performer. She was only there to support Frank, but when his partner fell ill, Annie would step up and take their place. Annie was able to do the most amazing stunts, such as shooting targets while standing on a galloping horse, shooting dimes from a man's hand, and cigarettes from his lips. Then, in 1885, Buffalo Bill offered Annie and Frank a trial run in his Wild West show. They made quite an impression on Buffalo Bill, and shortly after that, Annie was put in as one of his first acts. It is there where Annie met Chief Sitting Bull. Chief Sitting Bull was so impressed with Annie that he felt as though she was gifted with supernatural means to be able to shoot accurately from both hands. He actually symbolically adopted her as his daughter. He then christened her as Little Sure Shot, a name that she used quite often throughout her career. In 1887, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show was scheduled to perform for Queen Victoria's 50th anniversary jubilee. The Queen was so impressed with the performance that she wanted to meet Annie personally, and she gifted her with several horses in which Annie and Frank took back with them to America. On October 29, 1901, tragedy struck Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. The train that was hauling all the performers, equipment, and animals failed to yield to a second train in the convoy, and it slammed into it with deadly force. Annie's private car took a direct hit. Annie was thrown from her bunk and was severely injured, causing her to be in a coma for 17 hours. When she woke up, she found her left side was completely paralyzed. It took two years and five surgeries for her to be able to walk again. Her hair had turned white from the trauma. Annie was able to make a full recovery, but she did not go back to the Wild West show. Instead, Annie turned to acting and also started giving exclusive shooting lessons to gun clubs. Unfortunately, without Annie and Frank, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show became bankrupt and was shut down by 1913. After World War I broke out, Annie started traveling across America again, giving shooting lessons and demonstrations to the National War Council of the Young Men's Christian Association, as well as the War Camp Community Service. Then, in November of 1922, Annie and Frank were vacationing in Florida when they ran off the road causing the car to roll. Annie was pinned under the car, breaking her hip and ankle. She spent six weeks in the hospital recovering from the accident, but Frank never left her side. Even while needing to wear a steel brace on her right leg, Annie was able to continue to set records in 1924, but by 1925, she knew her health was failing. She returned home to Greenville, Ohio, where she planned her own funeral. Annie Oakley passed away on November 3, 1926, from pernicious anemia, a rare condition which not enough red blood cells are produced due to a deficiency of vitamin B12. Frank was so devastated by her death that he refused to eat, and he himself passed away just 18 days later. They had been laid to rest in Brock Cemetery in Greenville, Ohio, not far from where she learned to shoot, hunting for food to take care of her family. I'm going to end this video with what I thought was the most inspirational quote from Annie Oakley. But before I do, I just want to say thank you for joining me today. It really does mean a lot that you stayed to the end. I would greatly appreciate it if you could take a moment to hit the subscribe button or to leave a comment for me. That really does seem to help the channel grow, and I very, very much appreciate it. And now, Annie's quote. No, not the first time, not the second time, and maybe not the third. But keep on aiming, and keep on shooting, for only practice will make you perfect.